previously seen on Mama Cherry's Stay at Home Prevention Corona Soul in the Bowl. This is what happened. Let me get to you close up. Okay, it's Mama Cherry. I'm going to actually read from cover to cover for the first birth of the restaurant. This is what you've been waiting for. Put the glasses back on. It's a kitchen nightmare. Oh, yeah. You want to do it, do it, do it. Hi all my peeps and welcome back. We are, wow, sailing along at a rapid pace. And today, this is the big one. We are on meats. Oh yeah. All right, now, this is one of my favorite pig's trotters. Now, these glasses are getting on my nerves. I am going to attempt to try and read as much as I can without the glasses. If I start to struggle, I'll put them back on. But I think I look better with them off. Because <laughs> I've been looking at some of this footage and oh my goodness gracious, they're all jimmy jammy messed up. Here we go. Pig trotters. Or you might know them as pig feet. Okay. Alright, let's see if I can focus. I grew up in a neighborhood where the smell of pig's feet and chitlins, which I love, cooking would draw a crowd. Pig feet or trotters, as they are known over here in the UK, can be found in most high street butchers. If you don't see them, simply ask, okay? Trust me, they'll be there. You know, you wouldn't, and you won't believe how cheap they are. I've had them prepared in many different ways, but I always come back to this simple, down-home method of just boiling them to death in a pot, okay? But you gotta add your seasonings. This is what you need. Six pig trotters. Because I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna want two at least each, if you like them. I love them. 120 mil... Um, Milliliters, um, milliliters of vegetable oil, four liters of water, one medium sized ham hock, which is optional, one onion peeled, one red and one green pepper, one chili, one head of garlic, three celery stalks with their leafy tops, four bay leaves, two tablespoons of salt, one teaspoon of black peppercorn, one teaspoon of paprika, Two teaspoons of Mama's Love Dust and one potato. One chili, some chili sauce and cider vinegar to serve. If there are any hairs on the trotters, burn them off with a lighter or even easier over a flame of a gas cooker. Wash and scrub them until they are clean, making sure you clean between the toes. Get that muck out, okay? Because when they are cooking, cooked, you will want to suck them toes, I'm telling you. I know this might sound a little bit, what's she talking about? Trust me. Heat the oil in a large pot. Add the trotters and cook over a high heat until browned all over. Carefully pour off the hot oil, then add half of the water. Okay, what you're doing is you're just searing them, okay? You're just kind of... Just putting them in the pan with that little bit of oil, like raw, and got shh, 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 turn, shh, 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 turn. All right. Then you bring it. Um, then add half the water. Bring to a rapid boil and continue to boil for at least ten minutes regularly, skimming off the froth as it rises to the surface. Then add all of the remaining ingredients, including the two extra liters of water. Keep the onion, peppers, and chili and garlic whole. 
Legend has it that if you cook a whole potato with the trotters or chitlins, they won't smell as much while they are simmering. Lower the heat, cover, and simmer for at least two and a half hours until the meat begins to fall from the bone. Often add a ham hock to the pot. Although trotters are delicious, they don't tend to have that much meat on them. So the ham hock acts to bulk out the dish and gives everybody a little additional meat on their plate. Serve the trotters topped with chili sauce of your choice. I like any American smooth red sauces. Sprinkle with cider vinegar and accompany with potato salad and some greens. I'm telling you, just sitting here. If I wasn't on isolation, shut down in my house right now because of this coronavirus, I'd be down the butcher getting me some trotters in. I sure would. And you know what? We are actually allowed to go out just to do some essential shopping. I think I'm going to essentially need to go and get me some trotters while I'm shut in. That's what I'm going to do. I wish I could find these, but I can't. Chitlins! Chitlins are by far, <laughs> people don't believe this, but this is, take this and remember, my favorite food in the world. I love them. I do. And I think I mainly love them because I can't get them, but I love them. Uh, but it's no good telling you that if you don't know what they are. Chitlins are the pig's intestines. Before you can even begin to cook them, you must make sure that they are thoroughly clean. We all know what passes through the intestines. So if you're lucky enough or unlucky enough to try and get fresh ones, you must go through the long process of cleaning them. Because chitlins are such a popular dish in America, they can be found readily cleaned and frozen in most specialist supermarkets. Even though you need to give them a final wash, I'm not even going to pretend they smell good while they are cooking. They stink. Let's face it, they once contained all the waste materials from the pig. Cooking chitlins is an art. Back home, some people are famous for knowing how to cook a mean batch. My cousin Norma prepared some of the best chitlins in town. She cleaned them so well, we would all joke that she bleached them. <laughs> and then, and then um, the smell while they were cooking was minimal. Chitlins are usually cooked at holiday times or on special occasions. My mother always gets a big batch in when I return home to the States. You need to buy plenty as they reduce very quickly in size. Long after cook it, slow cooking, they should be eaten with plenty of hot sauce and vinegar. What you need? 500 kilos. I'm serious. Kilos of chitlins. Hopefully pre-washed and clean. Two large onions cut in half. One head of garlic. One large potato peeled but left whole. Three celery stalks. Um, three, uh, 100 grams of fresh sage. Some salt black pepper, and some dried chili flakes, and two carrots. Let's assume you have a batch of clean chitlins. Cleaned or not, you should still wash them again. So, hold them under running tap and pass the water through them, pulling and squeezing to remove all dirt and leftover muck. Then, cut the chitlins into six centimeter strips and place in a large pot. Cover with water and bring to the boil. Simmer for at least 10 minutes and then drain well. Rinse the chitlins and return them to the pot. And all of the vegetables and seasonings plus enough water to cover. Cover with the lid and slowly bring to the boil. Simmer for three and a half to four hours until the chitlins are tender. They will reduce in volume quite a bit. That's the main problem with them. You think you got a big pot, but then when it's all finished, you don't have as many as you thought. Once they are cooked, remove from the water with a slotted spoon, serve with hot sauce, vinegar, potato salad. Now, over here in the UK, I've, decided, I've discovered that the best place to find chitlins, believe it or not, is in a Chinese restaurant. Um, but you need to go into a Chinese restaurant that's filled with Chinese people, because they know the real deal. And usually, 
it's on the menu that's written in Chinese. So if I see a menu that's got some Chinese, I'll call the waiter up. Excuse me. Can you tell me what this is? And they tell me. And I'm in heaven. All right. And the other place that I found you can get them um, is in Paris. If you go to France, readily available. I found them in the markets. However, here in the UK, it's almost impossible to find because they have a law over here where they have to separate the awful from the main. So they don't, they, they're not accustomed. Although I have found like up north and in the rural areas where people know about using what you have, you can find them there. I'm just saying, if you can find them, try them. Okay, let's move on. We are now at some southern style chicken and chorizo fajitas. Fajita, arriba, arriba, arriba. Fajitas. Let me take a sip first. Okay. America is the melting pot when it comes to food. And Mexico has contributed some of the wonderful spices found in our dishes. Soul food in particular has been influenced by our Latin cousins from Mexico, Central and South America and the surrounding Caribbean islands. The chicken in these fajitas can be replaced by fish, prawns or vegetables. Just make sure you spice it up. What you gonna need? Juice of one lemon. Four chicken breasts, skinned and cut into thin strips. Two tablespoons of mama's love dust, baby, yeah. Two chorizo sausages, sliced. One onion, finely sliced. One green, one red, one yellow pepper, finely sliced. 50 grams of mushroom, sliced. One courgette. 200 grams of fresh or canned baby sweet corn, optional. Three tablespoons of vegetable oil, one teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon of dried chili flakes, one packet of soft flour tortillas, or you can use corn tortillas, and some tomato salsa, guacamole, and sour cream. Sprinkle half of the lemon juice over the chicken, then a tablespoon of the Cajun seasoning and mix and set aside. Toss the chorizo and vegetables with the remaining lemon juice and seasonings. Place a large frying pan over a medium heat and add two tablespoons to, of oil. When hot, add the sliced chicken, ground cumin, and the chili flakes, if using, and stir fry for three minutes. Add the sliced chorizo and vegetables and continue to stir for about five minutes and the, until the chicken is cooked through. You may need to do this in two batches. If so, keep the first batch warm in a moderate oven, warm oven while you get on with the rest. Warm the flour tor tor tortillas in the oven or in a microwave for 10 seconds. Divide the chicken and chorizo mixture between the tortilla and top with the tomato salsa, guacamole, and sour cream. Roll up and enjoy the flavors of Mexico. Arriba, arriba! Here we go. It's what you're looking for. Okay. Looking good. Oh, yeah. Turn the page. Okay. One of my earliest memories is of sitting on my daddy's lap, sucking the marrow out of a fried chicken bone. By the time I was five, my mother was a single parent. And every summer, to give her a break, my brothers and sisters and I were shipped off to the south in the state of Virginia, where we stayed with my maternal grandparents, along with any other cousins who also had to make the trip. I used to love my stays in the country. We were all too young to understand about segregation, and we played happily without a care in the world. When we got older, new laws came into place, and things changed considerably. We, were, we no longer had to ride at the back of the buses or drink from separate fountains. We were a close family and each summer we would hold large family reunions where all of the women would set about cooking up a storm. My grandmother was known for frying up some of the best chicken in the world. 
Sunday was the day when you knew you would be well fed. I have early memories of walking to the smells of a busy kitchen, including the aromas of fried chicken. We spent most of the day in church. And because it was such a long day, the women would all contrib contribute to the after-service meal. Church was deep in the countryside, miles away, so there was no way we could go home and then come back. Once you arrived for Sunday school at 9 a.m., you were stuck there, sometimes until 6 p.m. Unfortunately, if you were under 16, that didn't always guarantee you a full plate. We kids would have to stand to the side, lick at our lips in eager anticipation of a piece of chicken. I used to get so annoyed when I saw half-eaten bits of chicken on grown-ups' plates with nothing set aside for us kids. But my grandmother would always make sure we had a little something to chew on. After all, if we were expected to endure another two hours of church, we needed some food to stop the rumble in our bellies. Now, I'm going to show you a picture right now of what I call my forefathers. Well, my, my, my ancestors, my grandmother and her brothers and sisters, okay? This is special to me. And this these are the people who put together our family reunions, okay? Let me just get the picture. This, these are my relatives, okay? It's my grandmother in the blue, Mabel. Then my Uncle Bernard, my Aunt Anna, Anna, my Uncle Earl, and my Aunt Dia is there at the bottom. These were pioneers. These were my soul food heroes. I honor them. I respect them. And sadly, they've all passed away. To glory! So, this is the next recipe I have dedicated to my mother who has passed away. And this is the this is called Reverend Daisy's Southern Fried Chicken. Okay, here we go. I must admit my eyes are starting to tire. I wish I could do it without, but I can't. I'm gonna try and do it just with the one pair of glasses. Hopefully they don't fall off my face. Here we go. Cause I want to make sure I get every word right on this page. Fried chicken can be found on almost every soul food table. There is no mystery to his preparation of cooking at all. Because, because I was the oldest child and my mother always worked, I had to learn to cook from an early age. There were no cookbooks. I just stood and watched. And I was, and was often left to finish off a dish. Fried chicken was one of the first things I learned to cook. We never went to the commercial takeaway places. Why would we? When we all we had to do was you find a skittle, some fresh chicken, and start frying at home. Now, in order to make this, this is what you need. Now, this recipe I must admit I have updated because now I make buttermilk fried chicken. So, what I'm going to add some buttermilk to this, okay? And remember, buttermilk is very simple to make. You just get your regular milk, add some vinegar, add some lemon juice to it until it curdles, okay? So, what you need, 10 pieces of chicken. I prefer legs and thighs and wings as they tend to be the juiciest. Some salt, one lemon, one teaspoon of mama's love dust, teaspoon of black pepper, some garlic powder, some plain flour and five, 200 grams of plain flour, 500 milliliters of vegetable oil for frying, and a tablespoon of butter. For the chicken gravy, three tablespoons of seasoned flour, one tablespoon of light vinegar, I mean light soy sauce, or a teaspoon of gravy granules, and some chicken stock. Now, wash the chicken pieces and gently pat them dry. Then what I want you to do at this stage is place, season your chicken with some salt and pepper and some of my love dust and emerge it. Put it in some buttermilk. Leave it there to marinate for at least an hour. If you can leave it overnight, even better, okay? Then, 
at this stage, let's see. So I'm, I'm changing the words here because, like I said, I didn't update this recipe. You could, if you don't have buttermilk, you could just just wash the chicken, gently pat it, so sprinkle it with salt and pepper and the lemon juice, the Cajun seasoning, and just leave it for about to rest for about 10 minutes. If you're planning a large meal, you can cover the chicken and leave it to marinate overnight in the fridge. When you are ready to cook, place the flour in a large plastic bag for shaking or in a bowl and mix in the remaining seasonings. Add the seasoned chicken pieces to the flour mixture and toss until fully coated. Heat the oil in a large deep frying pan, preferably cast iron, and add some butter. I always include a touch of butter if my oil is fresh and I'm frying for the first time as it helps to brown the chicken and adds a little extra flavor. To test the temperature of the oil, drop a pinch of the flour into it and begins to sizzle immediately you can begin frying. Place the coated chicken pieces skin side down in the pan. Um, and when you're placing it in the pan, start at 12 o'clock. So, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, as you go around the pan. That helps you to know the first piece you put in, so you know which piece to turn first. Okay, so, uh, what you want to do is put it in and uh, place the chicken, chicken pieces, skin side down and fry for about five to eight minutes over medium heat until golden brown. Turn the pieces and then you cover that chicken. You, then you cover it. You only put that lid on once you turn the chicken. Continue to fry until the chicken is cooked right through to the bone. The juices should run out clear when you insert a knife. Remove the chicken from the pan and drain on some paper towel. Keep warm while you make the gravy. Pour the oil from the pan into a, uh, an empty jar or tin, leaving the meat drippings behind for the gravy. Save the oil for the next time. I find a mixture of half pre-used oil and half fresh oil fries best. This way you don't need to add the butter the next time. Place the fried chicken over a moderate heat, at the frying pan over a moderate heat and stir in three tablespoons of seasoned flour after about a minute. When it begins to brown, add the soy sauce or the gravy granules, if using, followed by the water stock, by water or stock. Bring to the boil and then reduce. Now, to jazz up the gravy, you can add some of your favorite alcoholic beverages. I've tried whiskey, rum, and tequila. They all work. Serve the fried chicken with gravy, mashed potatoes, and enjoy. And then we go on to southern fried jerk chicken. Sprinkle the chicken pieces with the salt and pepper. Then using a small sharp knife to make a three centimeter long cut in the fleshy part of each. Create a small pocket. Stuff each one with a teaspoon of my wet Cajun seasoning, the Cajun jerk seasoning. This creates a surprise when you bite into the chicken. And if you like it really hot, just put a little bit more in. Toss the chicken in the flour, salt and pepper, and fry the way I've just told you how to do it. Southern fried chicken nuggets. Follow the recipe on the follow the recipe I've just given you, but substitute two to three skin boned chicken breasts. Cut them into cubes and then do the exact same thing, marinating, covered in the flour and the seasoning and fry them. And then you've made some homemade chicken nuggets for the children. Here you go. Fried chicken. Looking good. Okay. Let's see where we're up to. Oh, there's a few, but I think we can do this. Can we do it? We could do it. We could do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Hot buffalo chicken wings. Oh, yes. I feel like chicken at night. Chicken wings used to be left over, um, used to, to be left on the bird to be used in soups, gravies, stocks, or just thrown away. The story goes that a woman named Teresa Bellissimo 
who ran a bar in Buffalo, New York, invented this recipe in 1964. Chicken wings became an overnight hit because of the fiery sauce, celery sticks, and blue cheese dressing, but most of all because they no longer had to be thrown away. There were many recipes for the hot sauce, but the one giving the one that giving below is the one I used. It was used in the neighborhood back home. Some people believe that the wing tips should be removed and that the wings cut at the joint in order for them to be called buffalo wings. Cutting them into smaller pieces just makes them easier to share. You're going to need 10 chicken wings, 2 tablespoons of Mama's Cajun seasoning, my love dust, 200 grams of plain flour, 1 teaspoon of salt, 1 teaspoon of black pepper, 1 liter of uh, vegetable oil for deep frying, three celery stalks cut into strips, and some of my homemade American blue cheese dressing. I gave that to you in one of the other videos. Go back. Check it out. For the sauce, 125 grams of butter, what, and then 75 ml bottle of crystal hot sauce, Tabasco sauce, um, but it's important, do not use like the hot Caribbean pepper sauce. It needs to be kind of like Frank's or one of the, well, you know, American style one. Louisiana makes the best, okay? To make the sauce, slowly melt the butter in a pan and stir in the hot sauce. Gently cook the butter and hot sauce together for at least 10 minutes. Cut the wings at the joint, sprinkle with a tablespoon of the Cajun seasoning and set aside for 10 minutes. Put the flour, salt, pepper, and remaining Cajun seasoning into a large plastic bag and add the wings and shaking them to coat them. Dust off any excess. Heat the oil and a deep fat fryer or a deep saucepan. Fry the chicken wings a few at a time for about 5 to 10 minutes until they are crisp and cooked through. The juices should run clear with a sharp knife as inserted. Remove and drain onto a kitchen paper towel. Place the wings in a dish and pour the hot sauce over them. Serve as a starter or a snack or a main meal. The celery and the dressing help soften the heat. Delicious. Have a look. Got it. I'm trying to see. That was a mouthful. So... I hope you enjoyed this section on meat. I hope it wasn't too long for you. Try cooking. Remember, most of these recipes are on other videos. Check out the videos. They will help you and guide you through. But more importantly, stay safe. Stay in love with your family. Stay in love with life. Mama Cherry loves you. And I want you to stay safe. I hope you're enjoying my series of Mama's Soul in the Bone, yeah. Stay inside and cook. Peace out.